We begin today with Warriors coach Steve Kerr saying last night that Memphis's Dylan Brooks, quote, broke the code and committed a, quote, dirty foul when Brooks swatted at Gary Payton II, which resulted in a hard fall and a broken elbow, and Payton is out indefinitely. Well, Bond, do you agree that Brooks broke the code, and what does this injury mean for the rest of the series, considering Payton was often the primary defender on John ja Morant? Yeah, Tone, I, I, I didn't waste, I didn't spend much time last night when I was watching this on breaking the code. I did text, I was texting as I often do at night with former players who I've been friendly with for decades. And yes, they agreed with that. That did, like that, then you move on from that. I mean, he, he broke Gary Payton's elbow. I mean, this is what he broke. That's the significant break here. It was a dirty play. And I talked to people who don't think that Dylan Brooks in his short history is a dirty player, but he committed what a lot of people said was a dirty play, everybody said. And so now you have a situation where you're looking at John Morant who could score, you know, John Morant may score 60 points in a playoff game. I mean, he's that great, he's that spectacular, he's that unstoppable. Gary Payton Jr. is the guy that Golden State has who is the most likely, the best equipped to get in front of him and stay in front of him a few possessions, to go up with him, to elevate and stay up in the air with him. I mean, Gary Payton Jr. is that guy. Gary Payton Jr. has some of what his dad had, which is all-time great defensive greatness. Not as consistently as his Hall of Fame father, but he can do this, and you need to stop John. Not stop him, but if he had 40 last night instead of 47, then, you know, maybe Golden State wins a game. So this is a serious injury and a serious absence and a great offense. Yeah. So I don't really know what it means to break the code. I gather it's somewhere in the area of you know, risking injury and even putting a guy's career in jeopardy. Yes. Did I think it was a dirty play? Yes. Did I think there was malicious intent? I'm not sure. What I am sure of is exactly what you are saying, that he's best to, he's out now, so he can't guard John ja Morant. But you know what? I don't know that anybody can guard John ja Morant successfully. I'm not sure that's true. What I find interesting about this, Mike, is I think this goes back to what happened in game one with Draymond Green. Draymond Green, we both agreed, did not deserve a flagrant two, but was right. given a flagrant two. After that, and I want to get all the names right here, uh, Brandon Clark. Brandon Clark said after the game, that's who he is. That's what we expect from him. And in response, Draymond Green said, nobody's going to tell me how to play. I'll play the way I want to play. And to me, that heightened all the tensions. And I think it may be supercharged um, Memphis's players physically and made them defensive. And I think it led directly to this kind of thing. And I'll say this, Mike, I think Adam Silver may want to make a phone call to both these teams yeah. before game three. Because yeah. you yeah, don't want this to get out of hand. I, I agree with you that this went back to like 1980s. I mean, you and I have seen plenty of these kinds of playoff exchanges and we thought it was over because the league, like the NFL said about player safety and conversation, we, we can't have this. We don't want this. The NHL has said this to a degree. And so this has kind of been scrubbed from all the team sports, no matter how supercharged a playoff series is. And now, Tone, you got this again. And I think Adam Silver may have to get involved. You can't, you, you can't have this anymore. I know you could have it in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, and guys fought like crazy in the 60s, our heroes. You can't have it now. You can't. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.